may come as no surprise that I wear multiple aesthetics. And if you're that person that's thinking, wow, she must have a lot of clothes to wear all those different aesthetics, then you'd be wrong because I actually have a pretty small wardrobe. Because I move a lot, my wardrobe size has just continued to go down because I found that my wardrobe took up a lot of space when traveling and it just was not needed. I now have capsule wardrobes for each aesthetic, but the thing is my capsule wardrobes can mix and match between different aesthetics. For instance, because I dress in dark academia and light academia, those kind of can be mixed in with old money pieces because it's preppy, you know? So yeah, today I'm going to be showing you my old money capsule wardrobe. I'm just gonna show you what I have and currently wear, and it might not be exact, but it still works for me. So what is old money? Old money is a popular aesthetic that is inspired by generational wealth and what those people wear and how those people live and the decor that they surround themselves with. And although the old money style itself can be hard to achieve if you are trying to go out and buy those very expensive pieces, it is possible to thrift some of these items and I recommend you do that first. For this wardrobe though, I'm not going to be showing you any shoes because I don't really have old money shoes yet. I just have some ballet flats. I don't feel my loafers are appropriate because they are a platform but I would like some more modest loafers that I feel would fit this aesthetic pretty well. There are two items that I feel are missing from my capsule wardrobe, and that is white pants and linen shorts. But I've been on the lookout for them, I just haven't found any that are right. <laughs> so the first items I wanted to talk about in my wardrobe were the highest quality items that I currently own. This sweater right here is from Lily Silk, and they actually sent me a few items that I'm going to be showing you in this video. And I was super excited because when I got into the old money aesthetic and I found out more about how to invest in pieces that have better quality with made of better materials that are better for the environment, Lily Silk was the first company that I saw. So I'm very excited to know that I can represent a brand that is actually doing some good. Lily Silk makes their items with 100% mulberry silk and cashmere. The natural fibers that they use are degradable, which means that it takes one to five years to decompose, which is 50 times faster than synthetic fibers. They make very classic staple pieces. That way in the end, you buy less. So this is the perfect brand to mention in this video because it's so on point when it comes to old money because of the classic style and because of the quality of their materials. And not only that, their packaging is 100% recyclable as well. So the first item I wanted to talk about was this cashmere sweater and I've always wanted a cashmere sweater. It's really soft, it's in such a great color. I keep it very simple when it comes to my wardrobe. I try to stay for more neutrals. That way I can really mix and match with everything in my closet. If I had this in a bright color, I know that years down the road, I wouldn't be able to wear it as much because it would just stick out like a sore thumb. But this way, I kind of blend in, you know? And it goes with more. I think a sweater like this is such a staple, especially around fall time and winter. And it's just a very beautiful piece. It could be really cute tucked into some shorts or even some pants like this. Not only do I feel like a classy lady wearing this, like I really do, I feel pretty classy. It goes with my DA wardrobe as well and my light academia. So it goes with mini aesthetics and I absolutely love it. This sweater runs at $155 and is an investment piece that you're going to keep for a long time. If you're gonna invest in something this expensive, don't wear it a few times. In order to make up for the damage that you're doing to the environment when you purchase an item, you need to wear that item at least 30 times. So keep that in mind the next time you're looking at something and you wanna buy it, how many times are you actually gonna wear that? Now moving on to the pants, these pants are 100% silk. Ah, I can't. I think that in a old money wardrobe, it's essential that you have some nice slacks. You're not really gonna see blue jeans in this wardrobe. I mean, you can. Sometimes we see the Princess Diana off-duty look, but more often than not, you're gonna be wearing some really nice slacks. I think the most important part though about buying slacks is that you buy a pair that fits you properly and a pair that doesn't have like 
crazy detail on it that doesn't allow you to mix and match with other items in your wardrobe. For instance, I had looked at a pair of slacks that had the tie right here, but I realized it just didn't work because if I wanted to wear a sweater untucked, you're gonna have this big bulge right here. So having like the simple slack works better for a capsule wardrobe. They are made entirely of mulberry silk, which is amazing. And they are very lightweight and soft. They feel so lovely on my skin. And one thing I've noticed, and I don't know if this is because it's real silk or not. Let me know in the comments if you know, cause I really don't. But I've noticed when I've worn silk in the past that wasn't real. This is the first silk item I've ever owned. It would stick to my skin when I would wear it. And now I'm thinking it's because it was synthetic fibers. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> For the next look, I had to turn down the brightness because this shirt is just shining and it's overexposed. I don't even think the camera can focus on it. So this blouse is from Lily Silk. But the reason I chose this one specifically is because this tie that you see right here can actually come off and it can just be a collared shirt. So I get two in one. I get to wear this two different ways. Actually, technically I get to wear it three different ways because you can unbutton it and then put the bow lower. Yeah, so three different ways. This blouse though does have a little vintage touch with these buttons and I personally liked that, but I feel like within the old money aesthetic, you would probably go with a more subtle button, something that could be hidden well, maybe pearls if you wanted to go a little more fancy. It's definitely more of a fancy blouse. You could just go with a normal button-up blouse, which is something I'll show you later in the video. The next item is this lightweight trench coat from Lily Silk, and it is 100% silk. The reason I wanted a lightweight trench coat as opposed to a heavy-duty one is because I already own one that's thick, and that's in my tan color, and that is the one that I wear around fall and winter, but I don't need a lot of fall and winter coats. I just need you know, one good one that's gonna go with everything, which is the tan one. So I got this lightweight one and it's nice because I can wear it as a nice cover up even in the summer. I can wear it out in the sun because it's breathable, but it can keep me warm if I need it to. And it also just looks amazing. It's very high quality and it's great material and it fits really well. That's exactly what I look for when it comes to those classic old money pieces. Everything I mentioned will be listed below in the description box, and I also have a discount code LANCHIN12 for 12% off everything on Lily Silk. Next on the list of basics is a simple cardigan. I only have this cardigan. This is a Hogwarts cardigan, but it is made of wool, which means it's very difficult to wear without long sleeves because it's pretty itchy, but I try to get over the fact that it's itchy because I just wanna wear it and it's the only one I own. I think a cardigan is such a good, easy cover up. It's good for the summertime. It's also good for when it starts to get cold too. And it goes with the pleated skirts that I consistently see in this aesthetic. It also goes with the nice dress pants too and a collared shirt like what I have on here. And yeah, I just think it works really well. So I find myself reaching for this cardigan a lot when I am wearing this aesthetic. Next on my essentials list is a collared shirt like this one. Because I'm working with what I have and I didn't go out and purchase anything else just to make this video, uh, I am using my Gryffindor shirt and this is the only one I own. So I'm well aware that this shirt specifically is not technically old money because it has the stripes down the arms and it says Gryffindor and it's a little too logo-y for me, but we're working with what I have and I do reach for this if I need a white polo. Even though this is Gryffindor, it still feels very sporty, but if you could thrift a Ralph Lauren polo, that would be ideal. You could even go with a American Eagle and Abercrombie and Fitch, just any of those polos would work. The polo is something I see so much in just kind of an everyday old money look. And I think that it's a great top just in general as well. It also mixes with lots of different aesthetics, but I personally like a white color. Next is a white pleated skirt. If you have a white polo, this just, they go together so well. And if you keep your closet more neutral tones, you'll find that you're able to wear this with a lot of things in your capsule wardrobe. So this white skirt specifically, the company it's from, it went out of business. So I can't really recommend the store to you, but you can find them on Amazon. I have a black pleated skirt from an Amazon seller and it fits me 
so incredibly well. But I really lucked out with this one because it's not see-through at all. So if you're buying whites, especially within old money, make sure that you're buying materials that aren't see-through. And if they are, please wear a camisole. Thank you. That's all. <laughs> so the next piece is this white knitted sweater. I think you can probably get away with any sort of white knitted sweater as long as it doesn't have something, it doesn't have labels on it unless it's Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, you know, those brands. But I am personally wearing a vintage Mickey Mouse sweater that I got on eBay about eight years ago and it is my pride and joy. Even though it has this big graphic on it, for some reason, it just has a very sailor feel. I don't know how to explain it, but I just really like the way that this looks. And it goes so well with my white skirts, my trousers, or even blue jeans if I do end up wearing those. And the next piece is this white linen skirt. And I actually thrifted this one. I think it's from Abercrombie & Fitch, but it is a mixture of linen, which is such a good find but the only issue is because it's linen every time I wear it it gets extremely wrinkly but it's worth it now if you only have one white skirt that would definitely work you don't need to go out and buy another one I was just lucky enough to stumble up on this for like five dollars and I just couldn't pass it up because it actually fit me and it's incredibly difficult to find bottoms that fit you at a goodwill so I thought it was a sign and it fit the aesthetic so well I just had to get it and if you saw my thrifting video you saw when i purchased this one actually i don't even know if it was five dollars don't quote me on that because you're gonna go watch the other video and i'm gonna say the real price and then i'm gonna be embarrassed i don't remember how much it was <laughs> another item i feel you can't go wrong with owning is a tan trench coat or beige this matches so many items in my wardrobe i mean yeah it matches pretty much everything and i've worn this so much I've worn it countless times and it hasn't fallen apart. I am absolutely shocked. I got this trench coat from Forever 21 for $5 on sale. And if you're going to get something from Forever 21, get it in the sale section. Because I got so lucky and I got it right after Christmas. This trench coat to me feels just very fancy. There's multiple different things that you can wear this with. Obviously this exact outfit, I wouldn't wear it like this. I'm just throwing it on just to show you what it looks like. You can't go wrong with having a good trench coat. You're going to get wear out of it if you live in a climate where it ends up getting chilly. And this is also something I can throw on during the summertime as well. The next piece in my wardrobe is this blazer style jacket. And I think it's actually called a military style when it has these buttons, but I'm not entirely sure. I just love the way it looks. I love the boxy shoulders and it is very fitted. It just, it fits me like a glove, like it was made for me. I purchased this from Zara recently for I think $100. It's really good quality. It's very thick, but the buttons did fall off within a few days of wearing it. I had two more buttons here and they're now in storage somewhere. I have to sew them back on. But overall, it's a really good quality item. It goes with everything in this aesthetic. It also goes with my DA wardrobe as well. And I feel like every time I put on this jacket with anything, it just makes me look prepared and put together. And I love feeling that way. So this is definitely my favorite jacket like even over a blazer i would choose this one because of this button detail it just really elevates it and makes it that much more special for dresses this is one of my favorite thrift finds this dress is made up of linen and some other materials but linen being the main one and i i just love it because it's modest it's high neck it has a good length it's thick material and it's very simple one of the first things I thought of when I was choosing a sweater color was that it could go with this dress really well in case I was out and I got cold. And it just looks really nice and cozy and simple and matches really well. I just love how it looks and I feel so happy wearing materials that are good for the environment. But this dress is from a brand that's underneath Target called Prologue. And I haven't looked up their website, but I need to because I have a feeling they have more similar items like this one right here and i i just love it so much it's just it's perfect and last of my dresses is 
this one right here, which I also thrifted. It is from Express, but when I saw it, I was looking specifically at the color navy blue. I do not like blue in general, but the dark navy, I felt like it was acceptable because I do own black clothes. And it reminded me of Blair Waldorf a lot. And I had just gotten this jacket and this jacket with this dress go so well together. I just envisioned myself wearing it and I had, I had to get it. What made this piece feel old money to me was firstly the way it fit, the length of the skirt, the high neck, the long sleeves, and the tie at the neck along with the ruffles and even these gold buttons. This dress feels very Blair Waldorf, more of a fancier, over-the-top old money style, which I'm a big fan of. So that's why I got this one. And there's not too much going on where it's extremely distracting. It's still a very one-tone dress, but I like that the gold buttons stand out. So I only own two old money style dresses and those are the ones I just showed you. I don't need any more than that because I dress in multiple aesthetics. I don't need to buy too many things. I think that having a modest top selection is definitely needed within this aesthetic. And for me, I have this turtleneck with no um, <laughs> sleeves. And I really like this when I have trousers on, I look so chic. And I also have this black pleated skirt as well, but I've only styled this with a few looks. I wear it more with my dark academia aesthetic, but it does bleed into this aesthetic. And the other turtleneck I have is a black short sleeve turtleneck. Both of these tops I'm such a big fan of and I get such great use out of them just being a simple black color because they go with trousers and I get so many compliments when I wear them with black trousers because I just look very sleek and elegant and I put on my gold earrings and I put my hair up kind of how it is right now and I look and feel very put together and it's such a simple look but it goes a long way. This black turtleneck I thrifted for $1.50 and this top right here I got from I don't know, some fast fashion clothing brand a long time ago, but I've had it for about 10 years. <laughs> the next piece in my capsule wardrobe is this white button up. This bow right here actually clips on and off, so uh, I can have a plain white button up if I want one, but I got this from a store in LA. Don't even worry about where I got it because these are so easy to find and they go with multiple aesthetics. And just in general, a nice white button up is a good piece to have in your closet. <laughs> with the bow though, this very much gives me Blair Waldorf vibes with the black skirt. And I love the way that this looks and there's so many different styling options when it comes to just having a normal white button up. This V-neck pullover sweater, specifically V-neck, cause I already have a turtleneck sweater and it's in a camel color, which is the opposite of this one. Therefore, I have so many different outfits that I can make with both because I have two different colors and two different styles, not two different colors in the same style. This is a wool sweater, so it's quite itchy. I would normally wear a long sleeve collared shirt underneath this and the collar peeks out right here and it's beautiful. I didn't wanna find that shirt and then put it on and then yeah, so here we are. <laughs> this type of sweater gives me such a old money vibe. Like it reminds me of someone that goes to a prestigious college. Obviously this is more of an oversized sweater. That's just how I like to wear my sweaters. But I feel like if you wanted, you could definitely go with the more fitted sweater like this. You know, I've seen the tight ones, the ones that are really tight in the arms. I just don't prefer the ones that are tight in the arms because it makes me too hot. And this is just more comfortable for me. And the last item on this list is this little, scarf i don't even know what this is actually called handkerchief but i thrifted this from a vintage market it was three dollars and i love it it's exactly what i was looking for it is from h m it had the tag on it but it is the exact pattern that i see when i look up old money pinterest photos so i was really happy to find this and i have gotten such good use out of this and it elevates a colored shirt in a way i cannot explain
<laughs> like it really does. You just tie it on with a collared shirt and voila. All right, so that is it for everything in my capsule wardrobe. I hope that this gave you an idea of what you should look for when you're building your capsule wardrobe. And of course, not all of these pieces you need. It just depends. It's just kind of to show you an example the pieces that I own and how I make it work with a lot of different outfits. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!